So I'd like to introduce Jenny Johnson. Um, Jenny is the founder of Quantum EFT and Mining the Akash. She's an international trainer, best-selling author, and um, as well as a past life regression hypnotherapist. And her presentation today is Discover Your Soul Patterns. Thank you, Jenny. Um, who here is familiar a little bit with what I do? A few of you. I see there's a few who have done my workshop, which is awesome. Um, and um, I've got my book here as well, which uh, has a lot of examples from people in my workshop who have had stories about their past lives. Um, Karen's in the story, uh, in the book. Um, Diane didn't quite make it. The editor cut her out. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but there's some um, wonderful stories in the book about people who have had experiences in the workshop. Um, when I'm in Australia, I tend to call the workshops EFT and Mining the Akash. When I'm in North America, I call them Tapping into Past Lives. Um, just because when the book came out, it made sense to do the tour under that, that name. So they're both basically the same workshop, in case you get confused. <laughs> All right, so what I wanted to do was just give you a quick rundown on who I am. Um, I'm a, a single mother of three, and I started off as an occupational therapist. Um, I know we have another one in the room, but um, I'm no longer an occupational therapist. I quit <laughs> last January, no, January before last. So now I'm full time in EFT as a trainer for EFT Universe and also quantum EFT and mining the Akash. Now, most people here probably don't know what mining the Akash is. Is that right? Who doesn't know what that is? Mm. Cool. I'll let you know what it is. So mining the Akash is really, the Akash is the total sum of your Akashic records or your past lives that are actually recorded magnetically in your DNA, in the multidimensional layers of your DNA that people call junk DNA. So we're walking around with all of our past lives in us and they're affecting us under the radar. So just like you know with EFT, we're walking around with subconscious patterns playing and, and they're happening under the radar. We also have soul level patterns that are happening under the radar and we don't even know that they're there. So just to ask a question, who of you here doesn't believe in past lives? There's a, <laughs> a few that are, uh -huh. yeah, and, that, and that's common because you haven't had the experience of it. Um, I've had many people in my level two workshops when we've been tapping to go to the origin of this pattern and then suddenly they're landing in a past life and it can freak them out a little bit sometimes. <laughs> I had one lady in Sydney who suddenly ended up in the Vatican and, and the person working with her in level two is going, what do I do, what do I do? And basically it's, it's the same as anything with EFT. You always go to where, what is occurring and where they are. So even if you don't believe in a past life, the more you work with people with EFT, the more you're likely to have someone spontaneously go into a past life. And you've got to know what to do about that and how to deal with it. I had, um, I'm also a clinical hypnotherapist. So I've trained as a hypnotherapist and then I went on and did advanced hypnotherapy and past life regression. But I remember even in hypnotherapy, um, our lecturer would say to those who don't believe in past lives, great, that's your belief, that's fine, but you know, need to know how to deal with when someone drops into a past life spontaneously. Okay, so that's what I'm, I'm presenting to you now, is to be open to when someone might drop into a past life. I was doing um, a workshop up in the Gold Coast in November and there was a lot of... Um, Dr. Peter Stapleton's um, psychology students, who, and Peter will be here tomorrow. So not all of them were um, down, going down the spiritual reign that most people tend to be attracted to me. And there was one lady who completely said, no, I don't believe in past lives. So when we were doing a demonstration, just the, the phone techniques demonstration, I asked for a simple, you know, a simple tell me about something simple, simple like a physical issue. So a lady came up and we were working on a physical issue of, of um, this pain in her stomach. Turned out that it was, um, it was loss of a baby boy 
And I, and I just intuitively, I knew her a little bit, and I intuitively just said, is that from this life? And she said, no. And so, of course, then we're working in a past life, and, and she just dropped into it quite straight away. So if you're not open to saying, um, where does this come from, in this life or any life, then maybe you're not getting to the origin of something. <clears throat> and time after time after time, I'm finding more and more that our patterns that we have in this lifetime are actually just re-triggered at a soul level from other lifetimes. Does anyone have an example in this life where they've had an experience of a past life and they've carried through? Yeah? Yeah? Karen, would you like to give us a, a, an example? Sure. Well, you've got one in the book. and I mean, I absolutely did not believe in past lives. Yes coming from Melbourne University, where I worked, you know, that's rubbish. Yes. So, one <laughs> day at an FTAP meeting, Josie was working with me on financial issues. And all of a sudden, I don't know how we got there, but I was in a past life being escorted out of a mansion during the French Revolution. Um, I was not the hoi polloi, but we were wealthy. Mm -hmm. And the thing that just struck me most and the thing that changed my mind about past lives was that I could feel the sweat on my skin. I was about six years old and I could feel the thick satin sticking to my skin. And that more than anything else. Yeah. Um, yeah. And finances improved after that. Yeah. I remember that session. It was actually me giving you a session in FDAP. See how you forgot. But in, well, exactly. I had no it, it's, it's, That was another one. Another one. Yeah, okay. No, the one that you gave me is in the book. Yes. And Excellent. even though we did that one, I still didn't believe it. Yes. But both of them have... I mean, I wouldn't be presenting today without the first yes. one you did. Yeah. Oh, excellent. <laughs> so it, it, it is... Once you experience a past life and you do experience all the emotions and all the sensations of it, um, and, you know, so often I'm working with people on a one-to-one -one basis in past life regression and we're working with, you know, where are you, um, how old are you, and, and like one lady said, I'm four, and um, where are you, I'm at a party. And I said, whose party is it? It's mine. And I, and I said, well, what are you doing? She said, I'm twirling. Because <laughs> she was a four-year-old. <laughs> And, and you know that when you're working in time and space and um, working on a four-year-old in this life, you have the same sort of language. But even in past lives, you will have the same experience of all the senses, of what you see, hear, feel, smell, taste, um, and you'll have the language of the age of that person. Um, even when they're in a different land and they have a different language, they, they say, I can't say my name, it's, it's not in English. So it's quite amazing and I love being able to be in the presence of, of people's soul lifetimes. It's very humbling to be able to be on that journey with them. So um, one of the things I wanted to do with us is just to do a quick tapping. Uh, where is it? So this is um, something from my book that I have given a, a quote from Kryon. And I'll tell you a little bit about Kryon in a minute. But I want you all to tap and just, um, I'll just tap here. Is that getting the microphone? So this is about giving our intention. So I want you to all repeat after me. I give my intent to walk the path. I give my intent to walk the path. That I came here to walk. That I came here to walk. To be the highest form of my spiritual self. To be the highest form of my spiritual self. Walking in human form on the earth. Walking in human form on the earth. I wish to understand who I really am. I wish to understand who I really am. And all of my magnificence. And all of my magnificence. And to use that knowledge and wisdom for my highest good. And to use that knowledge and wisdom for my highest good. And for that of others. And that of others. So that's the a little cryon quote. Okay, so who here is familiar with cryon? A few. So cryon is, is a channeled energy just like um, Abraham is a channeled energy from Esther Hicks. Does everyone know Abraham? Yeah. yeah. So Abraham's probably a little bit more familiar publicly. Um, but 
if you, if you um, know Cryon, um, he recently, well, Lee Carroll, who channels Cryon, he recently had to upgrade his server because it was crashing every time he put out a new, um, a new channeling. And he has over 20,000 hits a day. And the, the server that he went to, they said, we just want to know what you're doing. Um, because, you know, you have so many hits. And, and he said, well, I channel. Why? And he said, because you're approaching the numbers of porn. <laughs> oh, oh, so that's how many people... And he said, no, we're not doing that. That's how many people are actually hearing his, his um, channeling. So what I've done is I've combined EFT with my past life regression knowledge and hypnotherapy with the spiritual teachings of cryon. Um, I've also done matrix re-imprinting and chose not to go on to be a trainer. Benny will tell you all about matrix re-imprinting. Um, but I've combined the, the principles of matrix re-imprinting, um, but it's, it's a lot more liberal. And we include asking guides and higher self and we're looking at soul level things. So we're working in time and space, that's why it's called quantum EFT. Um, in matrix, when you work back in time and space, you call that energy the echo, and Benny will tell you all about that. I don't call it the echo, I just we just travel back in time and space and work with that you back then, whether it's you as a soul in another lifetime. Um, one of the things that humans have stress and trauma around is that they feel alone and helpless and powerless. So that's the main thing that we do in when we step back in time is to say, I'm you, I am your soul from another time and I'm here to help you. The other thing with quantum EFT and when we're doing past life regression, I will take people up into the higher learning when we get to a trauma and clear it. We'll then go into higher learning, like way above that to the masters up in spirit and ask for what's the learning, why, why did my soul choose this lesson and what's the higher learning. And sometimes I would take people all the way through that lifetime, then come back to that incident, go to the higher learning, apply the higher learning and then see how the life unfolds and it's completely different, which is pretty amazing. The thing that I've found is that when we ta uh, change things in time and place in a past life, and somebody else is affected and we help them clear their trauma their, and we know that soul in this life, then their life changes in this life as well, which is pretty awesome. There's a great story in the book where um, a lady who was Malaysian um, but have, had a love for Shakespeare and for old English stuff, um, jazz big bands, um, the, the English war years basically um, and she had a daughter who she said I, I don't know what the problem is with my daughter it's like she hates me and we've never been close so when we did the past life regression with the intention of going to that place that is significant and most relevant for her now and asking guides and higher self to take her there she um, went to England and it was the war years and she was pregnant and the soul that is her daughter now was the soul in her belly um, and she was very close with her mother and her mother died and all she had was fear uh, sadness and grief and because of all that sadness and grief there was no connection with her baby and no love being sent to the baby so we cleared that for her and we let her know that um, her soul would meet her mother again and, and it's very easy to do that when you're in a past life and you know that you've lived again. Mm -hmm. So we cleared that, um, tapped on her and then had her send love to the, her baby and had that love returned. So we had a figure of, a, of love going there um, and tapped all that in when she came back as well. And as soon as she got home, her daughter was different. Mm -hmm. Her daughter was completely different. That still brings up emotion for me. <laughs> because it's just so amazing, you know, I love it. <sighs> All right. So I get this sort of stuff every day and, and it's just a privilege for me to be present to it. Um, 
What I want to do now is, is give you an introduction to a snippet of a cryon channeling which tells you about the Akashic system. We listen to the whole channeling in the workshop that I do, but this is about 11 minutes and it gives you an idea of um, his energy, I guess, but also what, how it will give you an idea of why I use the wording I use because of his teachings about the Akash. All right? So I just ask you all to keep an open mind. He, he is American. He does sound evangelistic, but feel, about, uh, feel the energy and the message. <coughs> okay, and hopefully we can hear it all well. Especially the plan. So it's halfway through. And if we had to start at the beginning, We'll say this, there is a system to keep track of who is here. Now you may not think God would need a system, and you'd be right, but Gaia does. And there is a reason. For every single human soul that comes to this place called Earth makes a difference, has a unique energy, creates a record, and more, you'll see. And here it goes. Deep within the earth, there is an interdimensional cavern that will never be found that has three dimensional properties. Difficult to explain, it is the only kind of hybrid in its existence that has three dimensional properties which absolutely you would, you would see and understand if it were visible and it is not. For it is what you would call hidden. Never be found, it cannot be found, cannot be detected. It won't be. And in it is who you are. It's called the cave of creation. When you come to the planet, it's the first place you visit even before the birth canal. When you leave the planet, it's the last place you visit before you come home. <laughs> Known by all of you when you are not human. It is the depository of the record of humanity, all of the lives that humanity have lived, and the very core, core soul essence of who you are. And here is how it works. Each soul in the cave of creation is unique. Let us take yours, for instance. What is your name? That name that you have, when you go to the other side of the veil, is recorded in the cave of creation as you leave metaphorically as a stripe on a crystalline structure. The crystalline structure, you might say, is that which remembers the vibration of who you were. Now let us say you come back, and you're going to be another name, an unknown at that moment. Before you hit the birth canal, another stripe, is tentatively added to the crystalline. Same soul, strike number two. As it develops on the planet, it expects you to return and activate or solidify the stripe. And you do when you pass over again. So therefore, you have a crystalline structure for every soul, not every lifetime. Some of the souls there have a thousand stripes. Now I want to tell you something. Old soul, that's who you are. In the room. Even the one, or the two, or even the three that have come to this place, not necessarily for the program, but to help somebody else, you're there, old soul, and you've got multiple lifetimes.
And so the cave of creation becomes the Gaia record of who is here and who has been here. Now, here is the interdimensional part that is confusing to the human being. Listen. The cave is static. That is to say, there are never any crystals added or taken away. And that means that there is a crystalline structure for every potential human being who will ever live on planet Earth. <laughs> And you will say, oh, now that doesn't make sense. It sounds like predestination. It is not. The cave is predisposed in a quantum state to be complete every moment. Therefore, as things change on the planet, it changes. The crystalline structure numbers do not. I can't explain that to you except to say this is a quantum effect. The cave is always complete. It always has all of humanity in it, past, present, and future. That means that you are actually interacting with those who are not here yet. I can't explain it any greater than that. Your three-dimensional mind is not ready to go on that journey. But know this, the cave is complete. It's sacred. It's sealed. And Gaia is there. And so in summary, this cave becomes the record of souls, lifetimes, and the energy that you create. Now listen to me. Whatever you do on the planet, whatever that means to you, whatever vibration you create on the planet is imbued into these crystalline substances and the record of your life is here on the planet with the accompanying vibration forever. <laughs> Let's say you are Mary tonight. Mary, when you cross over, that's where you're going. And you've been there before. Oh, Mary, you've been there before. And you go there in joy, and you remember it, and you know where you're going, you're going home. And let us say Mary is a healer. Let us say Mary has increased the vibration of this planet by her very presence of walking on the, on the earth. Let us say that the earth remembers Mary's footsteps because she knows who she is. Let us say Mary is in touch with her higher self. Let us say Mary has created a portal wherever she goes, and then she passes over. And let us say that there is a, a gathering that is so sorry to see her go because she was marvelous and they cry and there are tears and there is sorrow. Well, here's the truth. Mary goes to the cave of creation and everything she ever was, the portal she creates, is imbued into the crystalline structure and the portal remains because Mary was here. And it never goes away. It never goes away. It never goes away. And then she comes again as George. <laughs> but here's what you got to know. And here's the process. And here's the beauty. Is that when George comes in, he picks up Mary. And both George and Mary go someplace. And that is the next step. Second of four parts. It is in the DNA. Your personal Akashic record, every lifetime you've been, everything you've ever done, all of the attributes are in your DNA. They're in those three billion parts, 90% of which are called junk. That is the Akashic record, partially. We've said that before. It's not new news, but now you have something you didn't realize. You've got George and Mary in your DNA and only George's body is there. So what's George going to do with Mary's lifetime and his DNA? I'll tell you what. Everything that Mary learned is available to George. He doesn't have to learn it again. Listen to me. You came in to this life and you sit in the chair and you're learning what you think you're learning and maybe you think you have a steep learning curve maybe you just tuned in to who you are I will tell you that in your DNA old soul is everything you need if you give intent 
old soul, you're going to have the wisdom of the ancients now. And every page you read in a crying book, you will say, I remember this, it's right. There's nothing new here. But it's nice to see it in writing. So there is a complexity here. The cave of creation is a record of who comes and goes and the energy thereof, staying with the earth. The DNA contains the individual record of the one soul and all they have done while you're alive. What a system. Look at the first one. It's Gaia related. It is in Gaia. It is deep in the earth. It represents a crystalline structure. That's Gaia. Known by the earth you are. Loved by the earth you are. Those of you who deal with earth-like things, nature, animals, even the study of the rocks and the land, when you walk in certain places, you can feel it. The intelligence... Oops. That wasn't supposed to happen. ...being... For what you do here will change the universe eventually. Can't you feel it? There is no cave of creation for the animals. They are here in support of humanity. Some of them are here to love you, and you know that. You look in their eyes, and they look back. They see the old soul. And yes, they can reincarnate. But they're not in the cave of creation. They don't have that which you would assign to a human being, which is a consciousness that can increase itself by free choice. A human is the only one who can do that because you've got divinity in your DNA. That's a snippet of crime. What do you think? So... That, that whole channeling goes on um, and gives a bit more information, but I'll press this. I'm on. Okay. Was there any comments anyone wants to make about that? Did it resonate with you? Did it, did it switch you off? What are some comments? Did it bring up emotion? Mm -hmm. Yes, Mike. I, I found it very peaceful. I, was, I, I always sort of find a bit of tension when I walk into this place. Yep. It actually settled, it settled you down, yes, and gave you peace, yeah. Yeah. If you, you listen to the channeling all the way to the end, it's pretty powerful. It always brings up emotion with me, and I think I've listened to it at least a hundred times. <laughs> but, um, it's that aspect of we have our cash in us, in the multidimensional layers of our DNA. And um, as Koran says, he's not the only one who channels this information. It's, it's the truth and so it's channeled by lots of different people. The same aspect. Have you heard it before from someone else? Or similar? Who? Yes? Mm -hmm. So... The thing is that when I do a past life regression with someone and in the groups in the workshop, um, I'll also be doing one in the breakout session. Um, what we do is we have that intent. Intent is really important. And we ask guides and higher self to take us to where we need to go that is most significant for us now. That is either holding us back with drama, trauma, unfinished business and affecting us now or where we can go and find the gold. And that's the part that he talks about which is mining the Akash, which is going and finding the good stuff. You know, we're so used to um, working on traumas with EFT, but it's about, obviously that's where you're going to be drawn to first because it's survival mode stuff. And survival mode stuff's always going to come up first. So until we clear the survival mode stuff in any lifetime that is still playing through now, um, then we can go and mine the Akash. 
So what, what we do when we mine the Akash is that we ask for um, you know, confidence or, or um, powerful, being able to powerfully stand in our truth. There's um, a couple of channelings that we're going to listen to now that um, we also listen, we listen to the whole thing in the workshop. It um, comes under parables and it's called Past Lives, Present Fears. What occurred was when Kryon was doing a small group, probably only as small as this, um, very early on, he, he, he chose people that were in the room and their past lives and four different fears. The, there was the fear of abandonment, fear of confrontation, um, fear of worthiness or, or feeling unworthy, and, f and fear of government and authority, and then fear of spiritual enlightenment. So just with a show of hands, do you know if there's, have you ever felt any fear of abandonment in your life? Yeah, quite a few. What about um, fear of confrontation? Quite a few for that too. What about feeling unworthy, like you can't be the leader, somebody else has to be the leader? Yep. And um, a fear of spiritual enlightenment, I can't step into my spirituality or something bad might happen. Yep. So that one, quite, not quite as much. I, I tend to get, that one tends to trigger the most people in my workshops because I, I obviously have more spiritual um, minded people wanting to come and that one tends to trigger a lot. Um, okay, so hands up, who wants to vote? We're going to listen to one of them. So hands up, who wants fear of abandonment? A few. Or who wants uh, fear of confrontation? Yeah, that, that one's um, unworthiness. Unworthiness um, and, you know, the, the fear of authority. That one? Yeah. I think we've got more for that one. Let's go with that one. You'll get an idea, even if you don't relate to it, you'll get an idea by listening to this channeling of um, how he, he told the story of somebody's past life. And then you'll get an idea, and then we'll do um, a session with someone, okay? All I have to do is find it now. Confrontation. Cryon gave the shortest parable ever, and the one that summarizes how when we change ourselves, it changes everything. This would... All right, so let me go to 46. Forty-eight. Mm, there. That'll do. Might be the tail end of the last. The forbidden one. strand, and you often feel controlled and don't know why. This is the end of fear. This of is the way karma works. <laughs> when these situations occur, we invite you to walk straight into them. The tool you now carry is the love of God in the new energy. This love is all around you. Your guides and angels stand beside you and hold your hands, whether you are in the most barren part of earth or the most populous. Feel this anointed love surround you. Claim it. Cross this painful bridge. Feel the love pour into you and know that abandonment is not in your program any longer. Feel the magnetic code dissipate as you free yourself from this phantom and know that you are cared for by an energy that will never, ever abandon you. Your efforts will be rewarded with success, for this is the lesson, and the passing of it will raise your vibration and that of the entire planet. Okay, fear of confrontation. There is also one among you who is fearful of any kind of confrontation. This will explain why. You are 32 years old, dear one, a male in this reflected lifetime. You are a female, however, as you sit here in this group. In this past life, you sit uneasily with others in the chill night, waiting to stand and emerge in a line of battle. As you move, your armor feels uncomfortable, for you've never had it on before. The helmet, which is forced onto your head, feels foreign and is the wrong size. 
The shield is heavy, and the sword? You never realized how heavy a battle sword was. You are asked to stand, but you barely can due to the added weight. You are being placed into battle as a last-ditch effort to save your country. It is being overrun by the barbarians, the conquerors, the ones grabbing your land and taking all you own. The small army of your country was overcome weeks ago. Now you are being required by your leaders in a final effort to go before this enemy that advances upon you. Only three days ago, the stewards of government came and gathered you from your fields. For you are a farmer by nature and understand animals, crops, and plants. Now you stand next to those battle clad with you in the lines, who are also farmers. For you all have worked with sheep and goats and livestock. And you stand with a heavy sword in your hand and realize that you don't know how to handle it that you don't begin to have the knowledge of the warrior you are about to face. You are afraid. Your body and brain yell, run the other way! But you have the silent honor of the love for land and country. And so you sit, waiting. It is time. The sun is rising and the sounds of the enemy come rolling over the fields with the morning dew. You peek over the trenches and you see their lines advancing toward you clanking and thumping with the machinery of war. The battle bell is sounded, indicating that you must rise and move forward. You look at the man next to you, a neighbor for years, one who grew wonderful crops, crops you have tasted many times at events with his marvelous family. And you see the fear and sorrow in his eyes. He avoids your stare lest you see his tears of you simultaneously lift your heavy weapons and armor loads as you stand and advance toward the warriors in your path. There is no thought of fleeing, no thought of saying no to your land. The enemy will destroy your farm anyway, so you might as well die fighting them now. Oh, the smell of fear is in the air, dear one, as you march toward this noisy line and you know that death is imminent. There is no turning back. You do not look in the faces of those next to you, those neighbors whom you have known and loved, those whose children you have known by name, for you know you will see their fear and you wish to give them dignity in their last moments. As you approach the enemy, the warriors advance quicker. They are anxious to meet you. Somehow they know that their victory is assured. All too soon, they are upon you. You see the face of the one who is going to make battle with you. He sees you and instantly sizes you up. He knows you are a farmer and he grins, revealing his missing teeth. All seems to be in slow motion as you wonder if he has ever helped birth a calf or tend a flock or raise a crop. Did he have a family? Or perhaps nurse a sick animal through a rough time? He raises his axe high above his head, and you raise your shield instinctively to ward off his blow. With his other hand, he sinks his blade beneath your shield, deep into your flesh. He has tricked you with this basic warrior move, and with a searing pain in your gut, you immediately feel your legs weaken under you. It is quick and effective. He knocks you over with his shield and lets out a victory yell. You feel the spittle on your face as he speaks in a tongue you don't understand. And he moves on to his next victim. You smell the familiar dirt as you lie in the mud, listening to the large group retreat towards your farm. In preparation, your family is safe in hiding and your animals have all been freed. Somehow, you were peaceful. It is over. You did all you could, and now it is up to the others. Goodbye, dear precious family. You hear yourself squawk in a voice that is seemingly not your own. I will see you all in God's time. It is over, and you know intuitively that you are going home. 
You feel the warmth of your life's fluid run out of you and spill on the land you love and have cultivated many times. The pain is brief. Then there is blackness. Dear ones in this room, let me tell you, this is why God loves you so much. For events like this create your lessons. And these are the lessons that raise the vibrations of the planet. Is it any wonder that we sit at your feet in awe that you have chosen to do such work? This painful event from a great past time speaks to you today, many lifetimes later, of your fear of confrontation. It also speaks to you of your hesitancy to join with your government in any venture, for it spelled death to you the last time. Please realize that you do not necessarily have to go through a battle with a toothless titan to have the fear of confrontation. But again, we've exemplified the most dramatic case this night so that all of you will appreciate who is sitting next to you. We encourage those of you who wish to move through this karmic fear of confrontation to put on the armor of God. The next time confrontation presents itself, in whatever form that creates fear in your body, which makes your heart beat faster or stirs the chemistry to make you anxious, move directly into it. Feel girded by the mantle of God. This new armor of the Spirit of God is far different than before because the rules have changed in this new age. This is the age of co-creation with God, an age where your power is absolute as long as your intent is pure. This is the mantle of love and the sword of truth. There is nothing that can stand against it. Those on the other side of your new energy confrontation will absolutely be aware of your karmic change as you move into the event, and they will change too. Watch for it. See how their reactions will not be the same when you put on your spiritual armor and wield your sword of truth. For your actions will push love toward the individual you are confronting and do more than just confront it. It will solve the battle without wounding the warrior. For it will change the one you are dealing with and it will change you as well. No matter what kind of confrontational situation is at hand, move into it with confidence and love. Your confrontation is no longer a battle where there is always a loser and a winner, but instead the confrontation itself brings about solutions for both. The mantle of God contains the armor of wisdom, the shield of knowledge, and the sword of truth. Move into it, therefore, with peace and a quiet countenance of assurance. When you do this, your karmic tie will be broken, and you will never again fear this attribute. Okay, I actually pressed the wrong one. <laughs> we were going to do unworthiness, weren't we? But never mind. Obviously. So did anyone feel triggered by that confrontation? Yes, Linda over there, Diane. Yeah. Yeah, a few of you. So this is the sort of thing that I do in the workshops is that we play one at a time and then whoever's triggered, we I'll, I'll do a demonstration and then we work on <coughs> each other. Um, so I'd like to do a demonstration. So who wants to be the demonstration? Linda, Diane? Come on, who wants to put their hand up the most? You can? Okay, cool. All right, now I need this. I will turn this off. I will turn this off. All right, actually, can I get you to go yep. that side? Because I want us to work with the bottles as well. Um, are we in? Can everyone see us and are we in? Yeah, you can. What about? Maybe any can't see us. Oh, Betty's moving. Good. Oh, I need to put this somewhere. <laughs> Alright. So, Diane, you, you've done the 
this process. I mean, yes, and, and um, just to speak up, all right, so everyone can hear. So when we just listen to that, what did you feel in your body and what part of it brought up the most emotion for you, the most emotional charge? Squashing that helmet yeah. onto my head. And then secondly, the, I've got the movement into my stomach, so I feel that I'm still feeling that thud in my stomach and it's kind of, it's gone like a clay at primary school, a lump of clay in my heart. Right, so you had that lump of clay in your stomach. So see how it's, it's triggered from, um, like you get moments in this lifetime where it, it reminds you of that as well. Yeah. So what's the strongest, the, the lump of clay in primary school or, or the listening to that and feeling it in your stomach? Yeah, feeling it in my stomach and listening to that. I went to my farming plants, which I've not been to before. Right. So it's a past life that you haven't been to, okay? So tell me about what came up, just keep tapping through, what came up about this farm in France? There was a trench and there was people who were with me in this lifetime at the moment. Yep. Who I'm really close to, mm -hmm. who were in the trenches with me. Yep. Um, and I saw the toothless, black-headed, bearded man it was really, really threatening. Yep. So stop there, what's coming up in your body when you remember seeing that? The tightness across my... I've got like a roll of yeah. tire around my tummy and yeah. that is black and yeah. fearful. Okay, so let's go back here. Even though I've got this black fearful tire around my belly. Even though I've got this black fearful tire around my belly. When I remember being in the trenches in France. When I remember being in the trenches in France. Being faced by this huge man with black hair. Being faced by this huge man with black hair, black beard, no black teeth. Black beard, no teeth. He was so menacing. He was so menacing. And I can feel the fear in my belly. And I can feel the fear in my belly. And all the tightness. <coughs> and all the tightness. I thank my body for remembering this. I thank my body for remembering this. My body is trying to protect me. My body is trying to protect me. But it no longer serves me. But it no longer serves me. And I want to release it and let it go. And I want to release it and let it go. This black tightness, like a tire in my stomach, around my stomach. Oh, this black tightness, like a tire around my stomach. It's getting tighter and tighter. It's getting tighter and tighter. It's getting tighter and tighter. Thanking the multi-dimensional layers of my DNA. Thanking the multi-dimensional layers of my DNA. For remembering this. For remembering this. To protect me. To protect me. To remind me never to get into a, a trench like that again. To remind me never to get in a trench like that again. To protect me from confrontation. To protect me from confrontation. But I instruct the multidimensional layers of my DNA to release it now. But I instruct the multidimensional layers of my DNA to release it now. It no longer serves me. It no longer serves me. And I instruct my DNA to process and release it. I instruct my DNA to process and release it. All the way back to the trenches in France. All the way back to the trenches in France. When I remember seeing that black haired, black beard, menacing, toothless man. <laughs> when I remember seeing that black haired, black bearded, toothless man over me. Over me. That was particular. Yeah, I could see him coming over me. I could see him coming over me. <coughs> he fe I felt so threatened. I felt so threatened and what fearful. Else? And fearful. What he else? dominated. He dominated. He completely dominated. He took away my choices. Mm -hmm. He dominated me and took away my choices. He dominated and took away all my choices. There were other souls in the trenches with me. There were other souls in the trenches with me. Souls I know now. Souls I know now. We were all fearful. We were all fearful. We were all fearful. We were all fearful. Corner of the eye. We were all fearful. We were all fearful. He was dominating. He was dominating. I could see him coming over the top of me. I could see him coming over the top of me. He taking was, away all I he took he took away all I loved. He took away all I loved. He took away all my choices. He took away all my choices. I felt helpless. I felt helpless. I felt powerless. I felt powerless. And I'm still feeling that in my body. I'm still feeling that in my body. So what are you feeling in your body now? It's starting to drop. Mm -hmm. What's left? What's trembling, stomach, 
abdomen. Yeah. And the trembling, the shaking in my boots. Right. <laughs> She's got boots on. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I've still got that trembling. I've still got the trembling. I'm still trembling in my boots. I'm still trembling. Tell me about the tremble you've got in this life. I have a significant tremor. I've had it for now eight years. Mm -hmm. And I do, I'm trembling at the moment. I can feel it. Mm -hmm. And it's triggered every single day. Mm -hmm. Every single day. And I'm, uh, mm -hmm. I'm constantly living with that. But yes. this is obviously where it goes back to. Obviously. Finally, we've got worked a long time. <laughs> I'm trembling in my boots. I'm trembling in my boots. My whole body's trembling. My whole body is trembling. I've got this tremor. I've got this tremor. And it's carried over into this life. And it's carried over into this life. I've had it for the last eight years. I've had it for the last eight years where someone came in over the top of me. Where someone came in over the top of me. Someone came over the top of me. Uh -huh. Someone came in over the top of me. Someone came in over the top of me. I thank my body for remembering it. For remembering how I was trembling in my boots. For remembering how I was trembling in my boots. How I felt so threatened. How I felt so threatened. All my choices were taken away. All my choices were taken away. My loved ones were threatened. My loved ones were threatened. I choose to process and release it now. I choose to process and release it now. All the way back to its origin. All the way back to its origin. My body's held on to it for too many lifetimes. My body has held on to it for too many lifetimes. And it's time to process and release it now. And it's time to process and release it now. I thank the multidimensional layers of my DNA. I thank the multidimensional layers of my DNA. I thank my guides and higher self. I thank my guides and higher self. For leading me to where I needed to go. For leading me to where I needed to go. To release this tremor. To release this tremor. That I've had for the last eight years. That I've had for the last eight years. When I remember someone coming in over the top of me. When I remember someone coming in over the top of me. Just like in France, in the trenches. Just like being in the trenches in France. Where I had all my choices taken away. Where I had all my choices taken away. <coughs> and all my loved ones were threatened. And all threatened. my loved ones were threatened. That remaining tightness in my stomach. Mm -hmm. The remaining tightness in my stomach. It's actually a black chain at the minute. It's just uh -huh. changed. This black chain. This black chain. This black chain. This black chain. Asking my body, what do I need? Asking my body, what do I need? What colour do I need? What colour do I need? Pink. To dissolve this black, <laughs> to black dissolve. chain. You're too quick. To <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> to dissolve this black chain. <laughs> Around my stomach. Around my stomach. Sending my body this pink. Hold, hold on to it as well. Sending my body this pink colour and energy. <coughs> Sending my body. Sending it to my stomach. Sending it to my stomach. Dissolving the black chain around my stomach. Dissolving the black chain around my stomach. It's, it's pink ribbon. Ah. It's pink ribbon now. Mm -hmm. Asking my guides and higher self. Asking my guides and higher self. With my full intention. With my full intention. To step through this now. To step through this now. To untie the pink ribbon. <coughs> to untie. I don't even need that anymore. I don't even need that anymore. And I choose to feel powerful. And I choose to feel powerful. Even when I remember that threatening, horrible man. Even when I remember that threatening, horrible man. I choose to step back in time. I choose to step back in time. All the way back into those French trenches. All the way back into those French trenches. I step back as me now. I step back as me now. I freeze everything. I freeze everything. I stand in front of me. I stand in front of me. I let me know. I let me know. I'm your soul from the future. I'm your soul from the future. And I'm here to help you. And I'm here to help you. I'm here to release you from this tremor. I'm here to release you from this tremor. I'm here to release you from this fear. I'm here to release you from this fear. Tapping on that me in that life. Tapping on that me in that life. Releasing all the fear. Releasing all the fear. Asking what that me needs. Are you male or female in that one? I was a male. Yeah. Asking him what he needs. Asking him what he needs. The first thing that was friendship. The word that jumped in. He wants friendship. He wants friendship. How can
actually give him friendship. What can you bring in to give him friendship? All I can say is a meal at the table with the black scary man. Uh -huh. Inviting him to uh -huh. my, my dinner table. Yep. To at a level, at a level that's yes, so it's that's not threatening. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Inviting that black scary man. Inviting the black scary man. Knowing that he's just a soul. Knowing that he's just a soul. And we have a soul agreement. <laughs> We both have learning and a lesson from this. We both have learning and a lesson from this. I invite him to my table. I invite him to my table. And we sit down. And we sit down and eat a meal together. And eat a meal. Mm -hmm. And our guides and higher selves are there. You have this party. <laughs> We're having a party. Our guides and higher selves are there. And we ask for the higher learning. And we ask for the higher learning. Corner of the eye. What's the high learning and the soul agreement we had? What's the high learning and the soul agreement that we had? What is my high learning? What is my high learning? Peacefully stand in my love light, <laughs> and that I can be, I can be powerful in my ability to love. Mm -hmm. It's okay to peacefully stand in your power and love. It's okay to peacefully stand in my power and love. It's okay to peacefully stand in my power and love. It's okay to peacefully stand in my power and love. What else did you say? <laughs> to show others and that duplicates across yes. the field mm -hmm. in all directions. Mm -hmm. What colour is that when it's duplicating across the field in all directions? Yellow. yellow. Stand in your power. So Stand yellow. Up. Yellow is <laughs> well, yeah, <yellow's> about <laughs> in here it's what yellow is about um, dissolving away fear. Dissolves away fear and confusion. So seeing that spread out across the field. School. All the way to primary school. When I felt that clay in my stomach. When I felt that clay in my stomach. Bring it up. Mm -hmm. Dissolving away. Dissolving away. Feeling threatened. Feeling threatened. It's safe to stand in my power. It's safe to stand in my power. And to send out love. And to send out love. Dissolving away fear. Dissolving away fear. I don't need to tremble in my boots anymore. I don't need to tremble in my boots anymore. I'm powerful. I'm powerful. It's safe for me to be in my power. It's safe for me to be in my power. I have that yellow power in my whole body. I have that yellow power in my whole body. And I send it to that me in the primary school. And I send it to that me in the primary school. Tuning into that me in primary school. Tuning, me, tuning into that me in primary school. When that lump of clay was thrown in my belly. When that lump of clay was thrown in my belly. Stepping back in time. Stepping back in time. Standing in front of her. Standing in front of her. Letting her know I'm her all grown up. Letting her know I'm her all grown up. And I'm here to help her. I'm here to help her. Tapping on her. Tapping on her. To release all her fear. To release all her fear. Asking her what she's feeling. Asking her what she's feeling. So what's she feeling? Um, she was standing in front of the school assembly and she lost her voice. Uh -huh. So what does that bring up in her body when she lost her voice? Fear. Fear and trembling. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, I was there to sing, and the other girl was a better singer, so she jumped in and took my place. Mm -hmm. That feeling of losing my voice. That feeling of losing my voice. Trembling in my boots. Trembling in my boots. Asking her what colour she needs to find her voice. Asking her what colour she needs to find her voice. Blue. Blue. 
Blue is safe and protected. Swap. <laughs> I forgot to tell you that I use the colours. It smells good. It smells like deep heat. <laughs> <laughs> Which is interesting because I have a lot of deep heat at that age. Really? Mm. So that's, yeah. Because I lost my ability to walk properly. Mm. Having my legs bound. I have my legs bound. The shape of my boots. Mm. I couldn't stand in my own power. I couldn't stand in my own power. I couldn't find my voice. I couldn't find my voice. <laughs> I was shaking in my boots. I was shaking in my boots. My legs couldn't even hold me up. My legs couldn't even hold me up. Sending that me in primary school. Sending that me in primary school. Who lost her voice. Who lost her voice. So beautiful blue colour and energy. That beautiful blue colour and energy. That smells like deep heat. That smells like deep heat. <laughs> Letting her know it's safe for her to stand in her power. Letting her know it's safe for her to stand in her power. Dissolving and releasing the shaking in her boots feeling. Dissolving and releasing the shaking in her boots feeling. Sending her the energy of me in France sitting at the table. Sending her the energy of me in France sitting at the table. With that beautiful yellow energy. With that beautiful yellow energy. Standing in her power. Standing in her power. Finding her voice with the blue energy. Finding her voice with the blue energy. Even though the other girls sang. Even though the other girls sang. And she judged herself. And she judged herself. And she felt not good enough. And she felt not good enough. She felt like the other girl was better than her. She felt like the other girl was better than her. Sending her that blue. Sending her that blue. Sprayed on yourself good. <laughs> That smells like DP. <laughs> it smells like DP. <laughs> Releasing all the fear. Releasing all the fear. Allowing her to find her voice. Allowing her to find her voice. And stand in her power. And stand in her power. And sing beautifully. And sing beautifully. Seeing and feeling her singing beautifully. Seeing and feeling her singing beautifully. No judgment. No judgment. Feeling her enjoying singing beautifully. Feeling her enjoying singing beautifully. With that beautiful blue energy all around her. With that beautiful blue energy all around her. Allowing her to stand tall. Allowing her to stand tall. Having the yellow energy from France. Having the yellow energy from France. It's safe to stand in her power. Sending it to her stomach and her legs. Sending it to her stomach and her legs. She stands up strongly. She stands up strongly. What else does she need? How is she feeling? She's just seen that man uh -huh. at school. Mm -hmm. He was our cleaner, maintenance person. That's the soul of him. Yeah. He's a lovely man then. Uh -huh. <laughs> Something worse somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> so he's there. Yeah. Showing his face with a smile, mm -hmm. singing beautifully, Diane. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It's all okay now. I won't tremble. It's just reducing, yeah. and allowing it to leave. Allowing the tremble to leave my body. Allowing the tremble to leave my body. Thanking guides and higher self. Thanking guides and higher self for leading me to where I needed to go. For leading me to where I need to go. And I remember our cleaner. And I remember our cleaner. Smiling at me. Smiling at me. Saying how wonderful I sang. Saying how wonderful I sang. Hearing his words, you sang beautifully, Diane. Hearing his words, you sang beautifully, Diane. Standing in my power. Standing in my power. With my strong voice. With my strong voice. It's safe to stand in my power. It's safe to stand in my power. And sing my truth. And sing my truth. And it's a beautiful sound. And it's a beautiful sound. And I take that forward with me into the future. And I take that forward with me into the future. The beautiful yellow. The beautiful yellow. The beautiful blue. Beautiful blue. The beautiful pink. The beautiful pink. All of those energies. All of those energies. Are mine. Are mine. 
Releasing and letting go of any other memories. Releasing and letting go of any other memories. From any other lifetimes. From any other lifetimes. That were triggered by this. That were triggered by this. I'm safe now. I'm safe now. To stand in my power. I'm safe now to stand in my power. And I'm never shaking in my boots again. And I'm never shaking in my boots again. <laughs> How cool. Yay. Thank you. That's Thank great. You. Thank you. We're peeling onion layers of lifetimes as well. Does anyone have any questions about that? I did lots of yawning. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Obviously, we were supposed to do confrontation, weren't we? Did that? Did you get any borrowed benefits from that? You did. Mm -hmm. So um, I do like to use the colour mirrors as well. And you know you can do that just by imagining colour, but I find that smell goes directly to the primitive brain and when you have a smell as well, um, it turbo boosts the work that we're doing because we're working with primitive brain and we're working with multi-dimensional layers. So when we're using colour, it goes straight there mm -hmm. and, and smell, it goes straight there. It doesn't visually smell like deep heat, does it? Um, no, it doesn't no, smell like to me, I could smell it and it doesn't smell like No, toothpaste. to me it smell, smells like toothpaste, like mint from toothpaste, but that's where your body took it, right? And because it was supposed to bring that memory up of um, your legs being bound because you, you were too wobbly on them. Yeah, interesting. So, did, did I miss something at the beginning? Did I, how did Diane get so quickly to a... Um... Well, she's done it many times. So also, um, the more that you do this, the quicker you go there. So the more that your body knows that you're working with multidimensional layers, the quicker it just goes to these past lives, very quickly. I have to tell you, I'm wearing lapis. You're wearing which lapis, helps which helps you go there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, any other questions? So maybe we'll um, do the unworthiness one and then see who gets triggered by that, huh? And then it'll be lunchtime. Yeah? And I better turn it all on again. The unworthiness is a really good one because, I think it's next, did I? Because so many of us are afraid to stand in our power and we're always looking for um, a leader and we're sheep and followers rather than being a leader. Um, and we judge ourselves and, and keep ourselves down. So this is a really good one. This channeling is about unworthiness. And um, Kryon says that um, old souls have had many... <coughs> I've got to put that Old souls have had many, many lifetimes as monks and nuns where we have been in sacrifice and been sheep and followers, where we never feel like we are the shepherd. All right, and so this is one of those lifetimes. So I think it will relate to a lot of people. I mean, if you're an old soul, you've definitely had a lifetime like this. So I don't think we need the projector for it. All right, so listening. The mantle of God contains the armor of wisdom the shield of knowledge, and the sword of truth. Move into it, therefore, with peace and a quiet countenance of assurance. When you do this, your karmic tie will be broken, and you will never again fear this attribute. Almost all of you have had a lifetime that matches the one given now. Go with me for a moment into this lifetime. If we were to ask you to look down at your feet, you could see in the dim light of the corridors that you are wearing sandals, sandals that you made yourself. There are some of you who cannot even see your feet, for your stomachs are so large due to the fatness stemming from eating the bread that you are making in the monastery. Rumor has it that fasting was invented by the high priests just to keep the friars from exploding. You can be the judge of that. All of you 
have had lifetimes in service before God. We can tell you this because there is a commonality among those who are here before me in this group. Searching for enlightenment, serious about sitting for an hour or so listening to my spiritual stories. It speaks of who you are and exemplifies your lives. But you see, there is something very interesting about this past life. For in service to God, the intent was indeed upside down. You have diminished yourself in service to God. Some of you, for more than one lifetime, you have groveled as sheep before your doctrine because you felt that it was your purpose and because you were told that this was necessary and instructed by God. Nothing could be further from the truth, dear ones. You come into this lifetime as enlightened beings with many colors showing with your greatness, showing how important you are in the scheme of things. We have already told you this, and this is why we wash your feet. So it does not serve your magnificence to spend lifetimes groveling in unlit passages as scribes before a godhead. Why did this happen? How could good news of your arrival as honored humans from the image of God walking in karmic lesson be translated to such a scenario? Let me give you a hint as to how this could be. How this wonderful message of human honor and empowerment from the great New Age Master of Love could have been twisted so much. Think about this. For hundreds of years, your spiritual leaders were also your governments. They occupied the same seats and passed political and spiritual laws. What is it that men regularly do to create control? I will leave the question for you to answer for it will show you why governors should never be priests. This upside-down worship is still rampant within your time now. Even though religion is no longer linked to your political leaders, listen to what your religious leaders tell you today. Does it really sound like the true message of human empowerment as the master of love intended? Modern-day religious leaders will still tell you that you are nothing born into a world where you cannot win, a world where you have somehow already done some horrible things that you should be ashamed of. They say you have to put your trust and faith and your abundance in a doctrine. Then you can be something. This message, dear ones, does not suit your magnificence. This message, dear ones, is not accurate information. For you are indeed special when you arrive. So what karma is produced through lifetimes of monastery service? It produces fear and anxiety towards authority. It creates a feeling of unworthiness and one where you feel you can do nothing that is good. You feel that only the higher spiritual ones can do anything at all. You spend lifetime after lifetime being told you are nothing and that you are sheep, then you are in constant search of the shepherd and you never feel that you are worthy to be the shepherd. Modern day religious leaders tell you who the shepherd is and most of them do not agree with each other. Still, they control you. They tell you what to do. They contain your enlightenment. This is wrong. It is a basic fear caused from eons of time spent misunderstanding who humans are. The Master himself told you that you are shepherds in training and are equal. Read the words again. This karma keeps you away from your magnificence. It keeps you from walking through the windows of opportunity because you do not feel worthy of success. You often feel that you cannot do certain things and cannot have abundance while you walk this planet. Claim your power. God is your partner in this new age, and your intent should be to communicate and discern, not fall on your face and worship to the exclusion of doing the work. Our admonishment is that you pull out the mirror of the Spirit of God 
and look in it. See who you are. See the brilliant colors that you are. See the honor that is yours. Revel in it. You are indeed worthy. And the love and instructions of God will support this. God does not wish to control you. The fear of enlightenment and commitment. I'm not doing that one. <laughs> that one will trigger the hell out of everyone. <laughs> No, so who um, resonated with that? Let me get my thing on. Did anyone get triggered by that or resonate with that? What do you mean by triggered? Triggered like there's an, um, a, an emotional, energetic charge around it. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Anyone else? I think there might have been a funny old nun at one stage. <laughs> you had um you were were you in my book, Gopi? Yeah. yeah. So you had um a life Yeah, I don't know that it was kind of religious, it was more kind of cultural. Yes. Yeah. Mm. So does anyone feel like they've had um lifetimes as a nun or a monk? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I had uh, one lady, where was I? I was in Van, uh, Vancouver, yeah. And um, I was doing a personal regression session with her. And it was, it was quite interesting because when I had her come down and, and land in the body, her whole body jumped. <laughs> like, oh, she's in there. Um, but then I asked her, where are you? Look at your feet. And she said, I can't see. It's, I'm in a dark corridor. And, yeah, it was, she was a monk wearing sandals in a dark corridor and scribing and... Yeah, it was all about it was all about bowing to others and um, and never stepping into her magnificence. Mm -hmm. So it was really great to clear that. But I never know where we're going to land. You know, I've had people landing in other planets, in Atlantis, in um, so we don't only have our cash from this lifetime and this planet. We have our cash in our DNA from other planets before that. But that's a whole other story. <laughs> surprised me with people where they go. Can I just ask, do you do this work with children as well? Yeah, um, my publisher actually, her son I worked with a couple of times in Washington DC by Skype and um, he was really interesting because we went to a future life as well. Mm -hmm. He goes, it's 2027. Mm -hmm. Okay. And he was a pilot, a pilot mm -hmm. and um, he has ADHD mm -hmm. in this lifetime, very poor attention span, um, has trouble focusing <clears throat> and uh, first we cleared lifetimes because he was a bit of a troublemaker but he kept saying I'm bad, I'm a bad person in, in, past in, life. in this life, life he yeah. said I'm bad, I'm bad and so we went to um, past lives where he was bad, mm -hmm. where he stole from people mm -hmm. and um, he was like a beggar boy mm -hmm. and we cleared that and um, he was great because kids use their imagination really quickly. So he he was, um, you know, he was. Um, oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> he he had um, a Harry Potter wand like in his toy box, and he went and got it, <laughs> and he turned it on, and he's going, "Hang on a minute, I'm just getting that from him, and I'm putting it in me." And, you know, <laughs> he was he was using his wand from the past life, and once we cleared things, he was bringing bringing in the clearing into him. And that we cleared it, and instead of being a thief, he was giving to people. Yeah. And um, yeah, he, we gave him these skills and, and magic, and he um, yeah he did some great things, yeah. and he helped people. Mm -hmm. And so then, when we went to the future, so we cleared the "I'm a bad boy" stuff. Then we went to the future and brought in. He was a pilot. He was focused. He was he could concentrate. He was very skilled. Mm -hmm. Um, and very knowledgeable and we brought all that back to him now in the classroom and he's been a completely different kid yeah. since then. Also he had fears and this was a, a byproduct, it was borrowed benefits. He had fears about um, sleeping at night, he had fears about getting into elevators um, and they just disappeared because I also connected him with his guides and higher self in, the, in that lifetime in the future. Um, so that's something that you can do when you want to take someone out of trauma, that feeling of being alone. It's not only just going back and 
saying I'm your soul from the future, you can be connecting them to their guides and their higher self in that lifetime so that they've always got someone there. So yeah, he <laughs> he misunderstood my accent and he, he thought um, that he had gui uh, guards, not guides. <laughs> so he's, yeah, I can't hear you. Oh, he thought he had guides, uh, I mean guards, not guides. Oh. So when he went to sleep at night, he felt like his door was being guarded. <laughs> <laughs> but that worked. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, that's what he created it as, which is cool. Yeah. cool. He felt like he had guards wherever he went. <laughs> Is it the is the urn noisy in yeah. the background? Yeah. yeah. I am, I'm so sorry about that, but we won't have any water for um for lunch if we don't have the wooden thing on. Yep. We could probably put it in um, yeah. the other room or turn it down. Yeah. That's all right. We'll we'll work it out. Okay. So that unworthiness. Who related to that and feels like they have an unworthiness issue and would like to do a session? Yeah, Linda, <laughs> come on up. See, you were meant to get a session in there somewhere. Next. Oh. Next. I'll just turn that off. Shut down. And have a seat. Thank you. I'll put that back on. Okay. All right. So start tapping and talking to me. So what was it about that that triggered you or that you felt emotion around? Uh, well, I was a nun and I just felt that I couldn't, I couldn't live my truth or live my purpose that I was, mm -hmm. that I was subjugated, I guess. Yeah. yeah. So where do you feel that in your body, that feeling that you were pushed down? Is it a push down or an over? Yeah, I felt very low, like I was low, mm -hmm. um, and, and I feel it all over my body, but probably not in my legs. Okay, and do you have a picture of yourself as that nun? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Linda, can you just speak up? Yeah. Sorry. It's all right. <laughs> just for people. Maybe turn the chair around. Something's just going on. We need to come around. Go away. Turn that off. Yeah, so that's in your stomach, the anxiety, or is it's in my, it's in my chest, chest. In my yeah. okay, even though I've got this anxiety in my chest and my stomach, even though I've got this anxiety in my chest and my stomach, I can see myself as a nun, I can see myself as a nun, where I felt very subjugated, where I felt very subjugated, I felt very low, I felt very low, and I felt that in my stomach, and I felt that in my stomach, I accept myself, I accept myself, and thank my guides and higher self, for bringing me to this life. For bringing me to this life. So I can clear all that stop, stands in my way of my magnificence. That I can clear everything that stands in my way of my magnificence. Mm -hmm. That feeling in my throat and my chest. That feeling in my throat and my chest. All that anxiety. All that anxiety. All that anxiety. All that anxiety. All that anxiety, all that anxiety in my throat and my chest. All that my lifetime as a nun. My lifetime as a nun. I can see her. I can see her. I can feel that life. I can feel that life. What's coming up? Anything? Um, just in sadness. That sadness. That sadness. That sadness that I feel so low. That sadness that I feel so low. That I have to contain my magnificence. That I have to contain my magnificence. That sadness in my body. That sadness in my body. Feeling in my chest and throat. That feeling in my chest and throat. All that sadness. All that sadness. That lifetime is a nun. That lifetime is a nun. I can see her and feel her. I can see her and feel her. She feels so low. She feels so low. What else is coming up? She feels hopeless. She feels hopeless. Is that in your body? She feels hopeless. She feels hopeless. It's in my stomach. Mm -hmm. That hopeless feeling in my stomach. 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 
Okay. So when you tune into her and that hopeless feeling, is she doing anything in particular? What's going she's on? She's just she's kneeling down. Right. And she's it's like she's praying mm -hmm. to God, but I think she feels like it's not going to happen. Like she, there's no way to go. It's mm -hmm. not going. This. So what's this is not going to happen? This what? is her lot in life, mm -hmm. and she can't. She can't do what she wants to do. Mm -hmm. um, right. So even though I have this memory, so even though I have this memory, I am that nun. I am that nun. I'm kneeling and praying. I'm kneeling and praying. And I feel this hopelessness. I feel this hopelessness. This is my lot in life. This is my lot in life. That's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. All this sadness. All this sadness. In my throat and my chest and my stomach. In my throat and my chest and my stomach. This is my lot in life. This is my lot in life. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. I accept myself. I accept myself. And all these feelings still in my body. And all these feelings still in my body. Thanking the multidimensional layers of my DNA. Thanking the multidimensional layers of my DNA. For showing me this. For showing me this. For allowing me to feel this. For allowing me to feel this. So I can clear it. So I can clear it. That feeling that this is my lot in life. Things aren't going to change. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. I'm kneeling and praying. I'm kneeling and it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Things aren't going to change. It's not going to change. This is my lot in life. This is my lot in life. I feel it in my throat, in my chest, and my stomach. I feel it in my throat, in my chest, and my stomach. I feel so low and so sad. I feel so low and so sad. I instruct the multidimensional layers of my DNA. Instruct the multi-dimensional layers of my DNA to process and release this feeling. To process and release this feeling. Corner of the eye, releasing it all. Releasing it all. All the way back to its origin. All the way back to its origin. Out of my throat. Out of my throat. Out of my chest. Out of my chest. Out of my stomach. Out of my stomach. It doesn't serve me anymore. It doesn't serve me anymore. And as a soul. And as a soul. And an enlightened being. And an enlightened being. I choose to release it and let it go. I choose to release it and let it go. It doesn't serve me in my magnificence. It doesn't serve me in my magnificence. And I choose to release it and let it go. And I choose to release it and let it go. All that sadness. All that sadness. All that hopelessness. All that hopelessness. That low hopeless feeling. That low hopeless feeling. This is my lot in life. This is my lot in life. It's not going to happen. I choose to release it and let it go. I choose to release it and let it go. And ask my body, what does it need? What colour does it need? And ask my body, what does it need? To process it and let it go. What colour does it need to process it and let it go? Green. Green. Yeah, so keep tapping on the rug. Yeah, the collarbone, sorry. Hold on to that. Sending this beautiful green colour and energy. Sending this beautiful colour and energy. This green colour. This green colour. Bringing in harmony and balance. Bringing in harmony and balance. Dissolving away that low feeling. Dissolving away that low feeling. This this is my lot in life. This is my lot in life. Feeling. Dissolving the sadness. Dissolving the sadness. Dissolving. This isn't going to work. Dissolving. This isn't going to work. Releasing it and letting it go. Releasing and letting it go. It's time for me to stand in my magnificence. It's time for me to stand in my magnificence. As an enlightened being. As an enlightened being. I instruct the multidimensional layers of my DNA. I instruct the multidimensional layers of my DNA. To process and release this. To process and release this. All the way back to its origin. All the way back to its origin. In this life and every life. In this life and every life. It doesn't serve me and I choose to release it. It doesn't serve me and I choose to release it. Under the arm. I choose to stand in my power. I choose to stand in my power. As I see her standing up. Yeah, she's been standing for the moment. <laughs> I, I thought I saw her standing. <laughs> okay, coming back to the crowded chop point. What's she feeling now? She's standing up and she thinks that there are mm -hmm. she's thinking that there are ways that she can work with what she has. Mm -hmm. 
and she's thinking that she can teach other women, other nuns. She can she can be a bit of a leader for other mm -hmm. other people within her. Yes. Whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so she's actually <coughs> looking for um, ways that she can work with what she's got and empower herself in the ways that she can. Mm -hmm. So what colour is that around her when she's looking for other ways to empower other nuns and ways for her to move forward? What colour? Is it still green or is it a different colour as she steps into her power? It's pink, pink, but she still feels, um, she still kind of feels a bit restricted. Okay, so sending that pink, don't think I'll do that too. Sending her that pink colour and energy. French pennies. That's <laughs> beautiful. I don't smell French pennies, yeah. but you do. <laughs> that beautiful pink energy. That beautiful pink energy. Allowing her to release the restrictions. Allowing her to release the restrictions. So she can stand in her power. So she can stand in her power. And move forward with ease. And move forward with ease. And think of even more ideas. And think of even more ideas. Feeling the unconditional love. Feeling the unconditional love. From her guides and higher self. From her guides and higher self. Who are dancing with joy. Who are dancing with joy. She's no longer on her knees. She's no longer on her knees. And she's moving forward. She's moving forward. The top of her head. That pink energy. That pink energy. And smell. And smell. That frangipani smell. Frangipani smell. She is a leader. She is a leader. She is a leader. She is a leader. She's a leader amongst the nuns. She's a leader amongst the nuns. She's helping them to see their magnificence. She's leading them to see their magnificence. What else? What was the smile about? <laughs> um, when I was giving birth to my first child, I was leaving the house and there was a frangipani tree in the house across the road and I went and picked frangipanis and I smelled them all through that birth of my first child. So it feels... Stepping into new birth. Stepping into new birth. New beginnings. Just like when I had my daughter. Just when I had my daughter. <coughs> Smelling the French of pennies. Smelling the French of pennies. A whole <coughs> new cycle A of my life. A whole new cycle of my life. Feeling the unconditional love. Feeling the unconditional love. Feeling supported by guides and higher self. Feeling supported by guides and higher self. Smelling those French of pennies. Smelling those French of pennies. Feeling the love. Feeling the love. Like when I had my daughter. Unconditional love. That unconditional love. As I move forward into my next cycle. As I move forward into my next cycle. Filled with love. Filled with love. And magnificence. And magnificence. As I lead those nuns. <laughs> As I lead those nuns. Yeah, they don't have to kneel anymore. They don't have to kneel. I show them their magnificence. I show them their magnificence. Mm -hmm. So anything else come up? See how the the smell is different for different people, and of course, French Japan is meant something. Mm -hmm. And and of course, when you see a different expression on the face, it's about asking what's what's the what what was that for? What was that smile about? <laughs> yeah. So how does she feel now when you tune into her now? Um, she does really feel like a leader. She does feel like she's going. She I can see her walking, and there's people following. Mm -hmm. So that's that's really nice. Um, I guess she feels she's unsure about being supported, um, and it's kind of like how she's going to do it, I suppose. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so good. Give you another spray of Frangie Penny. I'm just feeling a little bit like she knows she can, mm -hmm. but. Where does she feel that? Where does she feel that down? Is it down? It's really in her stomach. In her stomach, okay. And what colour and shape is it? Just 
tune into it and see what comes up. Even though she has this doubt in her stomach. Even though she has this doubt in her stomach. This, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? I accept myself. I accept myself. And all my body's memory. And all my body's memory. <coughs> and I ask the multidimensional layers of my DNA. And I ask all the multidimensional layers of my DNA. To show me what I need to know. To show me what I need to know. So I can dissolve it. So I can dissolve it. It's my intention as an enlightened being. It's my intention as an enlightened being. To step through this down. To step through this down. And trust that I'll be supported. And trust that I'll be supported. This doubt in her stomach. This doubt in her stomach. This doubt in my stomach. This doubt in my stomach. I still carry her down. I still carry her down. How am I going to do it? How am I going to do it? Who will support me? Who will support me? I still carry her down. I still carry and it's time for her to release it. And it's time for her to release it. So I can release it. So I can release it. That doubt, how will I do it? How will I do it? How will she do it? How will she do it? Will she be supported? Will she be supported? Will I be supported? Will I be supported? Asking my body what it needs to release it. Asking my body what it needs to release it. What colour do I need? What colour do I need? <coughs> that doubt of how will I do this and how will I be supported. Yellow. Yellow. And yellow dissolves fear and confusion. <laughs> there you go. You can hold on to that as well. Sending her this yellow colour and energy. Sending her this yellow colour and energy. And smell. And smell. Dissolving the confusion and fear. Dissolving the confusion and fear. The doubt. The doubt. Around how do I do this. Around how Allowing her to trust. Allowing her to trust. And have faith. And have faith. That she will be supported. That she will be supported. Her guides are there waiting for instructions. Her guides are there waiting for instructions. They're waiting to support her. They're waiting to support her. She will be supported. She will be supported. <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> There's just crowds of people in front of me. Uh -huh. Crowds of people in front of me. All the emotion. All the emotion. All the emotion. Top of the head. All the crowds in front of me. All those crowds in front of me. All the emotion. All the emotion. Feeling safe. Eyebrow. Feeling safe to be a leader. Feeling safe to be a leader. Corner of the eye. That yellow that clears the confusion and fear. Yellow that clears the confusion and fear. Corner of the eye. All those crowds of people in front of me. All those crowds of people in front of me. Under the nose. That yellow energy. Standing in my power. Standing in my power. Chin point. They're, they're flowing towards me. They're flowing towards me. Crowds of people. Crowds of people. I am supported. I am supported. Hold on, I am supported. I am supported. I'm more than supported. More than supported. There's crowds of people in front of me. <laughs> what does that bring up? It's just a really powerful feeling. Mm -hmm. That powerful feeling. I instruct the multidimensional layers of my DNA. I instruct the multidimensional layers of my DNA. To activate this powerful feeling. To activate this powerful feeling. Into the stem cells. Into the stem cells. The blueprint of my DNA. The blueprint of my DNA. And activate it into this current life. And activate it into this current life. It's mine now. It's mine now. In the past. In the past. And in the future. In the future. This powerful feeling. This powerful I can tune into whenever I want. That I can tune into whenever I want. Crowds of people in front of me. Crowds of people in front of me. I trust. I trust. I call on my guides for <coughs> assistance. I call on my guides for assistance. This powerful feeling is mine. This powerful feeling is mine. I choose to activate it now. I choose to activate it now. In my current DNA. In the current DNA. In this current body. In this current body. And take it out into the future. Take it out into the future. Take a deep breath. What colour is that powerful feeling of crowds of people in front of you? It's white. Mm. And white is the most powerful. Diamond unicorn is the most powerful of all of the colours. It's the what colour? It's clear. It's white. It's the. Um, 
It's magnolia. <laughs> You're a flower person. It's um, it's the highest energy vibration wow. in the universe. So that's the power you've just called me. Yeah, it feels, it feels, um, yeah, amazing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And that's yours now, imprinted in you. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Lots of crowds around you. <laughs> you will. Wherever you walk. <laughs> At lunchtime, there'll be crowds. Okay, did anyone get any borrowed benefits from that? Mm -hmm. Yeah? So you're getting the idea of how quantum EFT works? I should, can I just say something? Yes. Just, um, when she was saying about, um, you know, the nun, and it was like, there was kind of like a lack of creativity or something. And, and then when she was talking about the, um, the baby and the smell and the magic and then she really was different at yeah. that point. And it was like this creativity, so just a sort of intuitive thing that it was all about creativity and, yeah, new and birth all and those creating. people, you know, yeah. creation. Yeah, stepping into a whole new phase. Nice. And allowing myself to be and allowingness to move. Yep. And to trust that the support will just be there. Mm. Yep. There's a really great Cryon parable. Um, and if you want to listen to more Cryon, um, it's cryon.com and you go to free audio and then there's parables. But there's a really great parable called The Missing Bridge and it's all about trust and faith, about getting to the other side even though the bridge is missing. So that's a powerful one to listen to too. I, I often give my clients cry on homework, <laughs> listen to this parable, you need to hear this, um, and tap on it and see what comes up. But yeah, the missing bridge is for you okay, yeah. and for anyone else who relates to that. Yes, Diane? Um, because we were sitting here, I could see your posture was very mum-like, <laughs> like it's very bowed and mm. curled up. And as you shifted, so too did your posture mm. open and strengthen and... Yeah, it was beautiful to see the physicality of the emotional yeah, of the change, change and the shift. Yeah. And see how, um, you know, I mean, Bruce Lipton, there's so many books about talking about speaking to yourselves and speaking to your body. And Cryon very much talks about that. He calls it CAL, cells are listening. Mm -hmm. and, um, and how we are the masters. It's like, it's like get on the loudspeaker. Um, there's all these workers in the factory wanting to know what you want them to do and get on the loudspeaker and tell them. Otherwise, they just go about their business doing what they think they're supposed to be doing according to past patterns and, and beliefs. So it's up to us to instruct and especially to be, to be like a masterful instructor and instructing those multidimensional layers of our DNA to go and do what they're supposed to be doing. So um, as I've been doing this work, I've been becoming more standing my power more with it, I guess, um, and being more instructional to that part of our DNA that stores all of these memories and instructing it to then when we bring back the gold to cement it and activate it in this life and in our DNA and speak to the blueprint of the stem cells, which Cryon says to do. Any questions? The other thing um, that I've just been developing with a lady in... North Carolina is, um, uh, for those of you who are on Facebook, um, connect with me, but I've just created uh, Tapping Into Past Lives TV, which is a web-based Facebook program, something like that. But I have um, some videos from the, the last year's North American tour, and there's a really great one with a lady, um, Marie Noel, who's French, and um, it's about, I was hiding my greatness, and I think it's really powerful for and relevant to a lot of us that, um, yeah, we hide our greatness because of something that happened in a past life. So I'd recommend that you watch those, they're free. Um, I have videos from the book also on that page. Um, but if you want any further information, see me up the back in the breaks. And um, I do have a Transform Your Life program that I've been doing with people, which is an intensive program where I get to work with people and do two hour past life regression and quantum EFT sessions, then the next week a quantum session, then the next week two hour past life regression and quantum, and then the next week quantum. 
um, and that you can do that one month at a time, uh, one month, three months, however many months. The more you do it, the more powerful. And what I've found is that but people, the more they do it, uh, the more time we spend in higher learning and it can be so profound, they're, they're channeling um, stuff not just for them but for humanity and it's pretty powerful. And they, I always record them and send it to them and they go, did I say that? Wow, that's so profound. But it wasn't them, it's their higher learning and their higher self talking. So it's pretty profound stuff and I get to be witness to all of that and I don't take it lightly, it's very profound for me as well. Um, to be able to share in somebody's journey like that is an honour. And so I love this work. Um, it brings up emotion for me <laughs> because it is so powerful. And it's about changing ourselves and finding our magnificence and not living in, in just, you know, don't just look at EFT in this, this life and what's going on now. Follow it back to where it's really come from. Seeing yourself as bigger than just this life. You're a soul. Find out where all of the stuff's coming from at a soul level. Um, what else? I have free 15 minute sessions and that I'd, uh, consultations I'd love to speak to you if you want to talk to me about your own stuff so we can organise that and um, yeah, I just want to thank you all for being here I do have um, one Melbourne workshop this year left which is April 23-24 and after that I'll be oh, I'm in Perth in April <coughs> Brisbane in May and then North America again June, July, August, and then New Zealand, October. So if you know people in those areas and you want to get them to my workshop, let them know. And I've just created last night a Quantum EFT Facebook community group. So um, come on over and join that too. We have lots of stories there. So thank you. Any other questions? Yes, question. Sarah. So apart from the prior channelings, how are other ways of access Past life, um, just tuning in, like yeah, tuning into what's going on now, like a pattern yeah. now, and asking the multi-dimensional layers of your DNA. Once you've cleared something at four-year-old and two-year-old and in the womb, ask the multi-dimensional layers of your DNA, where does this originate from? And ask to process and release it all the way back to its origin in this life and every life. And then often people will go bang straight into a past life and yeah. they're very surprised. So especially when you, it's so much about intent, when you have the intent at a soul level that that's what you want to do. Like, I want to clear this. Yeah. I had one guy in, in Sydney who didn't believe in past lives. His words were, I'm not a past life kind of guy. He's in my book. Um, I'm not a past life kind of guy, but he had this abandonment issue that um, it was very appropriate because his last girlfriend was in the workshop and he was sitting opposite her and saw her every day right in front of him. <laughs> So it was triggered every day, bang, 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 for four, four days. And on the last day, he said, I, I've worked on this till the cows come home and I still can't get it. And it went back to being abandoned as a baby. And I said, well, if you're open and have the intention to clear it wherever it goes and be open to that, then I'm sure we'll find it. And so he did. And he just started crying with emotion. He's going, I'm an Aboriginal. And they, they pointed the bone at me and I've been sent out of the community to die. That's a pretty big abandonment. It still brings up emotion. <laughs> but he kept, he's tapping with all this emotion of being sent out to die and, and abandoned by everything that he knew yeah. as, at a, as a community. Um, and he kept saying, but I'm not a past life kind of guy. It's like, but I'm feeling all this emotion. But I'm not a past life. Like he didn't, his consciousness was still yeah. there saying, I don't believe this, but I'm feeling this. I'm an Aboriginal yeah. and I've got the bone pointed at me. You know, so he's, he was still fighting with himself. His, his consciousness was going, no, I don't believe this, but this is the emotion and this is what I'm feeling and we cleared it. See, the video of him is in the book. So in the book there's also links. You can get it on Kindle um, as well as in the book. There's links that take you to the videos from um, some of the sessions of the stories in the book. So his session's in there. So it's pretty powerful stuff. Um, Sorry, what, what was, was the question? Did, she said, "Do you ever think you get to the ability to the place where you've cleared everything?" Um, well, as long as we're alive, I reckon we've got stuff to learn. Yeah. So we're always going to be finding other layers of the onion. 
but we're getting we're finessing it more and more. But the more, the more we get rid of the big traumas and the big negative beliefs, the more we can go in and find the good stuff. Um, you know, there was there's been examples of parallel lifetimes that have come up, and there's some in the book. If you find them with um, Vanessa and her lifetimes, she had one lifetime as a helicopter pilot in a Chinook helicopter pilot in the 60s, and another lifetime in the 50s as a as a professor, a German professor. So your soul is not always just in one lifetime. It can be split off into a couple, which is interesting. There might be another book in there. But um, you can have lifetimes where you're going in and finding all the good stuff. Once you've got rid of most of the traumatic stuff, you can be mining your cash more and bringing in the great qualities of confidence. You know, Vanessa, um, one of her mining the cash stories was being that German professor and um, speaking to hundreds of people and the experience of it was they wanted to hear what she had to say, what he had to say then. And that was the experience she brought back with her and she's written one book and the next one's she's doing now and it's awesome. She's done some work with Karen too. One of the best books I've read for ages and it's called The Gift by Vanessa Lagoon. I couldn't put it down. I was staying up until 12.30 at night in Toronto when I had a workshop the next night just to finish it <laughs> the next day. So, yeah, awesome book. And her own Akashic experiences in my workshops are in the book mm -hmm. um, that are the characters of the book. So it's pretty amazing stuff. But, you know, you can work through the major stuff, but it is, it's like peeling the onion layer. I don't think we will ever stop having work to do. But the more, it's like the forest of trees, the more you get the big trees, the more then you can go and mine the Akash. Yep. Diane? Um, my chosen method of seeing Akashic stories and past lives and stuff is EFT, but my daughter, my 13 year old, refuses to do tapping. Oh, I'm not doing that stuff. She's yeah. Saying. But she'll grab some crystals. And she came to me a month ago and she said she'd been watching a movie and the movie was for school about World War II. And she said, it just triggered me, she said, and then she came to me again last week. So she told me that part of the story, and then a week ago, she's sitting on the toilet next to me while I'm brushing my teeth. And I was like, you know, it's nothing more profound than that sort of discussion. Mum, I've got to tell you something, I'm thinking, okay, what is it? <laughs> and she said, um, I know how I died in my past life. And I just looked at her, I'm thinking, you're 13, you know, you think me, woo-woo, and all that sort of stuff. And she looked at me and she quite deliberately said, I've always seen 11-11. I died at the 11th block at Auschwitz. I was killed by being shot in the back of the neck and this is what happened. So I said to her, okay, how do you feel this? And tears are running down her face. Not because she was crying, but because it was releasing. It's profound. Yeah. yeah. So then two days later, she's sitting in my car. She made sure her sister and brother were out of the car. And she said to me, mum, you know, I just want to talk this through. And I said, well, can you heal it? And my technique would be do, to do quantum tapping, of course, because I find it really easy to do that. But she doesn't want to do that. So I just talked her through intentionally Intention. looking at that vision mm -hmm. and turning and looking to the person who actually shot her in that lifetime. And what do you see in that? What was his reason for doing that? And she immediately said, he couldn't help it. He had to do it. He's following orders. And if he hadn't done it, he would have been shot. And I said, okay, okay. So it was so immediate. She didn't have time to think about it. It just came out. And I said, okay, what's what's the lesson from there to here? Why have you suddenly remembered this story now? What's the lesson in that? I said, who was that person then in your current life now? And she told me who that person was. And she said, it's dad, mm -hmm. her father. Mm -hmm. So I said, what can you do about this? Well, you know, I don't even like him. So how can I send you off? I said, send this person who had the run at that point love and healing. And she said, well, I can't do that because I don't even like him. And I said, well, if you do that, it will come back to you. So this is your lesson. And to see the parallels yep. and the repeated pattern. And she's done that and she's, yeah, it's interesting. So yes, tapping is yep. one method, but meditation. Yeah, intention. and intention, you know, that's what Kyan says in all this is it's about your intention and the, the tapping turbo boosts it. It does, it does. And, um, and it helps. It helps people who are into tapping 
to be able to do this work on a, a deeper, more profound level. But it is its intention. That's the, the biggest, 80% of it is intention and speaking it out loud. But tapping helps it go through the body because we're working with the um, wisdom of innate and the body. So yeah, cool, awesome that she did that. Yeah. Cryon also talks about 11.11 as a, a, a spiritual wink, saying you're on the right track. <laughs> when uh, we said we were coming back from break, the clock said 11.11. 11. <laughs> <laughs> it was my spiritual wink. So, well, yeah, let's go to lunch, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kenny.